quarterback position a lot and calling them instincts kind of makes it seem like it's inherent and it's just something you either have or you don't have but is that true or is or are, are those things like pocket presence and just what what people call the instincts of playing quarterback can you develop those and improve those or are they truly instincts and you either have it or you don't yeah i mean i think you can develop anything at the quarterback position um so if you work on it and practice and emulate game game like situations and you can really you know, you can really do anything. So um, some people have a better field than others, but if you practice like anything else, um, it's just second nature. Matt, how much of your success this season do you think is the fact that you have the same offensive coordinator as last year? Yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, Coach Sark's done a great job um, calling great plays every game and preparing us really well. And um, obviously with, as many guys we had back from last year on offense to step in and just kind of do what I'm supposed to do has been really easy because, you know, like like we always say, we have the best best skill players, best offensive line, best running backs, best tight ends, so, and a really good offensive coach. So put it all together and, you know, good things happen, and we'll just continue to do that. John Zener, go ahead. Yeah, Matt, what have you seen? L LSU's defense always has talented players, but this year they've given up more yards and points than, than we're used to seeing. What have you seen from them um, on film and, and in games you've seen so far? Yeah, I think that that's a good point by saying they have really good players because they really do have great players. Um, all those guys are really highly recruited out of high school. Some of them are young. They have some old guys too, um, you know, but they do have a new defensive coordinator this year, and they've kind of been working through some um, bumps and bruises, but – They've been playing a lot better, and obviously we're going to get their best shot, and um, you know we're going to expect them to come out and play play their heart out. So we just have to match their intensity and um, go out there, and it'll be a really good game. But um, you know they have great players, and they're they're really starting to figure it out. Stephen Smith, you're up. Hey, Mac. Even with the uh, reduced number of fans, Tiger Stadium can still be a pretty hostile environment. How much pride do you take in going into an opposing team's home and taking the wind out of them or getting a big victory in there? I mean, games like this is why everyone wants to get a chance to play college football. I mean, everyone on our team looks forward to a game like this, um, regardless of the situation where we get to go and play an away game against a really good team. So, I mean, nothing really changes from a mindset standpoint. You can't overlook or, like, focus too much on something like that. Uh, really just go out there and do your job. But – at the end of the day, like I said, it's, you know, really cool experience that we're going to have um, to go in there and play. Ashko, go ahead. Matt, can you just talk about, I know you were happy in January when Najee announced he was coming back for his senior season, but how much more important is that now, given uh, B-Rob's been hurt a little bit and now with the unfortunate news with Trey Sanders? Yeah, just starting out with, like, Trey's situation, you know, I had shot him a text earlier today and, I hope that he has a speedy recovery and, you know, he was really showing a lot um, this season and he's a great guy. So, you know, I just wish him well. And obviously some of the younger guys will be able to step up um, in this situation and B-Rob, yeah, he's been a little bit banged up, but he's going to have to contribute even more. And he's done a great job this year too, you know, just running the ball really hard, getting those five, six, seven, eight yard carries that we need. So he's been great. And obviously Najee does what Najee does. And it's really exciting, to, you know, get, to get a chance to play with him for his senior year. Um, and he's showing that he's one of the best running backs in the country and he works really hard and it shows on the field and he's going to continue to do that and, you know, lead our team, you know, on the ground in the past game and then in protection. So he's done all three of those really well. Next question. Yeah, Mac, you just mentioned Trey Sanders there. Just what sort of impact did that news have on the locker room just in terms of the, the shock of, of hearing about that? Yeah, I mean, we had our like um, a little bit of a meeting last night and, Obviously not having Trey there is difficult, but um, he was a great, uh, he's a great player still, but he obviously won't be with us, you know, playing with us, but he made a lot of improvement this year. And, um, you know, he brings a lot of energy and um, he just showed that he can bounce back from an injury before. And I think he'll do that again. So and not having him will, will, uh, will kind of hurt us a little bit, but, you know, we got to figure it out. It's just another challenge for us to um, maybe get a couple of young guys to step up. Kirk McNair, go ahead. Yes, Mac. Uh, the uh, number one ranking that Alabama got yesterday, I know the players have to, most of them at least, probably do about it. Do you try to keep that in some sort of perspective during the season? 
your number um, one. Oh, I, yeah, I think I got your question. Sorry, it was a little breaked up. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's great to be considered the top team or whatever, but none of that really matters. I mean, what, whether you're ranked 25th, first, doesn't matter. You have to go out there and control your own destiny by winning every game. And if we can just try and win every game, then we'll you know continue to go throughout the season and get a chance to play more games. But really, we just have to focus on this week, um, go out there and, and try to beat LSU, and um, whatever happens, happens from there. Hey, Mac, you mentioned those young guys at running back. Just what have you seen from Roydell and, and Jay so far this season? Yeah, those guys um, have come in and worked really hard. You know, they're both workhorse type guys. Um, you know, they've gotten a good amount of reps throughout the year in practice. So, you know, practice is pretty much like the game. So you just have to make sure that they know, you know, don't overcomplicate things. And um, we'll make sure to get some more of those reps just to make sure we're in sync. And, you know, they'll both have to contribute. And I think they'll do a really good job because they work hard and it's going to show in the games. These will be the final few questions. We'll start off with Tyler Waldrop. Hey, Mac, I just wanted to ask you about the bye week. Nick talked about, you know, talking to the players before uh, those who returned home returned home and just reminding everyone we're in the middle of a pandemic and to to be as safe as possible. I'm just wondering, what, what was the bye week like for you personally? And, and did it feel different? Um, this year, just obviously with everything concerning COVID-19 and, and trying to be safe? Yeah, it was definitely a little different, and that was a good point. Coach Saban obviously was very straightforward with us about how we have to approach it. You know, you don't know what family member is doing what, and you got to make sure that you have your mask on at all times. So, you know, my family, I can't really speak for everybody, but I think most guys just went home, and I just went home and hung out with my family and we kind of just spread out and I didn't hug anybody or do anything like that. So it's definitely a little, a little weird. And, you know, you're eating at a different table. It's kind of like you're at the kid's table or something, but <laughs> it's a little different. But I mean, I just sat on the couch and watched football. I didn't really move that much. Just watch football and got to relax. Yeah, Mac, what's kind of your scouting report on Derek Stingley? And with a corner like that, how do you balance how much trust you have in your own receivers and and maybe, I don't know if caution is the right word, but knowing that you have a great player covering them as well. Yeah, I think um, Derek's done a great job this year. You know, not a lot of teams have tried to go after him. And I think he's proven that he's one of the best corners in college football. So you just got to watch a guy like that on tape and you always got to know where he's, where he is on the field because that's a player who can change the game. And, you know, he, he's been doing a great job this year and he'll continue to do that. So we have to be ready, but you know, I trust my guys, um, just like he probably trusts his DBs. So, you know, it all just comes back to just executing.